Hi once again. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, tuning in and watching um, this series. Um, the Lord is faithful to always deliver His heart. I thank Him for that. Um, I desire not to hear anything but His heart. And um, today we're going to hear uh, what I believe He has put on my heart for the body of Christ. And um, it started back a couple weeks ago. He had given me the word um, peacemaker. And, you know, I wrote it down. I looked it up and that was as far as I got. And I kept a note of it. Then a week or so goes by, and he told me to read Judges 6. Well, I read it, and then um, the following week, um, I was preparing for uh, the Friday's message, and I asked the Lord if that's what we were you know, to, to go by, which was the Judge of 6, and I didn't feel nothing was connecting, and he ended up giving me something else. And um, anyway, um, I had kind of a... Uh, a, a crazy week. Um, I wasn't physically, I wasn't up to doing a whole lot, but I won't get into all of that. Praise God, I'm doing better. But um, it's amazing how God is, is so faithful with his word and to accomplish all that he says he will do. And I got this message on the Friday of our Bible study, so um, it came together so quickly, and I just thank God for that because he makes things so real to me when, when I do study the word. But anyway, um, in the course of all of that, when he gave me the Judges 6, I went back to that on Friday, and then I also got um, Zechariah 4, 6, which uh, is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And when you see that all, how all this came together, this is where I always stand in awe of God and, and how that if you're hungry for truth and you're hungry to know what is on his heart, he will show you. So glory to God. So we're going to go through this, uh, what he's given me, and you'll see how everything's connected and just really what is on his heart for the church. And um, I'm just going to pray right now. So Father, I thank you for, for the listeners today, for the people who are viewing in. I thank you, God, that the opportunity here is to share your heart, to share your word. It's not about me. It's not about any of the viewers, oh God, but it's about you. It's about your ultimate will in their lives. It's about pleasing you and, and setting ourselves apart for you, oh God. So, Father, I pray right now that the people that are watching would desire you with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength and would love you with an everlasting love, oh God. I pray, Father, that today, as they as they view these ser this series, oh God, that you will draw them into that secret place, to that place of repentance, to that place of intimacy with you, God, because truly that is where the blessings flow. So right now I ask, Lord, that you would unplug every ear, you would remove every hindrance, oh God. Father, I ask that you would tear down every wall that has, has been built around the hearts of your people, Lord be it through unforgiveness, be it through deception, be it through um, any other avenue that the enemy has used to blind your people today, Lord. And Father, give us all eyes to see that we can see what your heart is, that we can hear what your heart is, O oh God, that we may be changed from glory to glory. Father, that we will not be pew warmers or, or men pleasers, but God, we will be set ablaze for your kingdom and for your will and purposes in this hour. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Okay, so um, we're going to start in uh, Judges 6. Now, I'm not going to read through the whole chapter. I, I really hope that um, you will read it, and you will just see how, how it all fits in. But um, we're going to start in verse 1, and it says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian for seven years. First of all, um, Gideon was the sixth judge up to this point. And whenever there seemed to be problems or what, idolatry or, or the way Israel had rebelled against God, God would raise up a judge to come and to correct them, to lead them. And here we see in verse 1 that the, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And we'll see further down how they did evil. So what did the Lord do? He delivered them into the hands of the Midianites. Now, if we look at the word Midianite, it means strife, contention. It means a place of judgment. So here God has given them over to strife and contention. Why? Because they were disobedient. And if, and if we as a church are disobedient to the ways of God, 
um, to do all that he says to do. Just, you know, as I've said in many of my teaching, that the Israelites are um, our example. They are our pattern as to um, how we live and how we conduct ourselves. And, and, you know, we can always draw a parallel to their lives, to our lives. Okay, so um, why did he give them over to seven years? Well, if you look at seven, is the number of completeness. Usually in a, in a period of time, when you're in a, in going through something and you're in a period of time, um, there's a reason behind that. And for I believe for here, seven being the number of completeness, it, it meant that it was going to complete something in them. It was going to cause them to maybe see their hearts or to um, uh, see the, the attitudes of their heart or whatever the case may be. Now, because of the Midianites, now, again, we're looking at this in the natural. This is the story of the Israelites and of Gideon. And, but I want you to see it in the spiritual side of it, too. And it says in verse 3, um, actually two stories, it says, And the hand of Media prevailed against Israel because of the Midianites, the children of Israel, because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them dens in the mountains and caves and strongholds. How many people in the body of Christ are hiding in caves and in dens that they've created in their spirit, in their mind, because of strife, contention, and unforgiveness? And th this is what has become a stronghold in a lot of people's hearts, is this strife and this contention, and it has put them in a place of judgment. Amen? So, uh, so far, I hope you're following with me. Okay, so when... When we see in verse 3, when we look in verse 3, we see, um, it says, And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they come, encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. Well, Every time Israel sown into the earth, they planted all their, their um, wheat and their harvest, the Midianites would come and steal it. Well, what does John 10, 10 say, right? It says, I am the door, actually verse 9 starting, I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. John 10, 10 says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Listen to me, church. If you are in strife and contention, you have allowed yourself to be put into a place of judgment, and you have allowed the enemy to come and to steal all that he can steal. Because Jesus is the door. If we go through him as the door, which is love, forgiveness, peace, righteousness, and all, all the, the, the positive attributes that go along with uh, being obedient to God, um, we will find pasture in God, amen? But if we allow ourselves to stay in, in the strife and the contention, the enemy will come and steal all that we have, right? He is the one who is the, the, the cause of strife and contention. Okay, so in verse 6, and again, I, I do encourage you to read it all yourself, but so otherwise it would be, uh, it will take us too long. In verse 6, and it says, And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites, and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. The word impoverished there means oppressed, feeble, slackened. And it was because of the strife and the contention that they became impoverished, right? It was the Midianites, it says, um, that impoverished them. But again, the Midianites being the strife and the contention and the place of judgment. And if you have allowed yourself to be in that strife and that contention, it will oppress you. It will cause you to be sick and feeble and slacken in the things of God. Amen. So what did they do? They cried unto the Lord. And usually when we get into this state, it's when we cry out to the Lord. Amen. It's This is the state in, in most cases where... Um, some people choose to stay in that state, but I believe God is saying today that if you are in a place of strife and contention with anybody, with, with the body of Christ, then God is saying, get out of it. Uh, stop allowing the devil to steal from you. And we'll see you in segment two where our time is running out, okay? Thank you.